Before we start, I'd just like to say that when Suma appointed me to lead this discussion, I thought very fitting. And why I say it's very fitting is my first year as an elected councillor, I was the only rookie. And on my second term, I was the only returning councillor. So <laughs> I sort of took it as my job to make it a cohesive unit, along with my mayor, of course. Anyhow, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for coming. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Glenn George. I'm a city councillor in Melfort. Go Mustangs. Uh, I'm also the Northeast Director for SUMA. I'd like to tell you all that this session is being recorded, so hopefully you can all hear me good at the back. And if you have anything to say, you must come to the mic. I don't care how loud your voice is, please come to the mic because we need, a, need it recorded. Okay. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Sherry Ann Dulager. Sherry Ann is a municipal consultant with a particular interest in good governance, regional cooperation, well ordered, sustainable growth, and strong executive decisions. Sherry Ann believes that public service is an honor, and she has held several management positions dealing directly with municipal councils and related boards. Her first hand experience in municipal administration gives her valuable perspective of today's local government reality at the street level. Sherry Ann holds a master's, holds a master of public administration degree and a nationally recognized local government certification. Sherry designs and delivers executive training workshops to share her knowledge and reinforce fundamental democratic meeting etiquette. Sherry Ann is also a presenter for the upcoming Association of Manito Manitoba Municipalities Education Program. Ladies and gentlemen, Sherry Ann. <laughs> Thank you very much, Glenn. <laughs> and it's, it's great to be here at SUMA and also uh, back in Saskatchewan. In fact, in around 2008, my family and I lived in Saskatchewan for a year in the Waka Cudworth area. So it's great to be back, back here as well. And so the building an effective council is so very important because that's where your decisions are made that affect your community today and in the long term. And so I designed a, this little workshop as a, a meeting simulation and it's called In Pursuit of Persuasion. And the focus is to build the executive capacity for, for council members who are sitting at the table, at your local table, making those decisions every day. And, and it's actually not limited to municipal councils, but anywhere that there's a board governance structure. So yes, thank you again, Glenn, for the introduction. And I started working in municipal government in a little village called Minburn in 96. If you've driven to Edmonton, you've gone by, if unless you blinked, and it was it's a really small village, uh, presently going through uh, a dissolution study, and uh, but I started there at, in '96, and then I've been working in and around municipal government and studying ever since then. Uh, one thing that I've noticed, no matter what community I've worked in. There, it's so important for the, the council to have good skills on debating issues effectively. And through the years, I feel that I've seen 
the best and the worst of uh, council member etiquette at the council table. And I, I really feel that there's a need to reinforce the fundamentals that it's okay to have a different difference of opinion, that we have a democratic system and majority rules, and we can't expect everybody to agree all the time. So, so in order to demonstrate this, I developed the, the workshop as a, a meeting simulation. And it's actually quite fun. And, and I've, uh, before this presentation, I, I recruited some volunteers, and they'll be coming up shortly, but not now. <laughs> and and uh, so, so thank you for that. And uh, as far as the generic executive skills, if somebody can master those, those uh, skills in debate, and respectful debate and professional debate, you can use that in any board or governance meeting setting. So whether you're sitting at your local council table or whether you're sitting on the, the recreation board or the library board or a regional board or your condo board or <laughs> whatever it may be, you can use those skills. So they are generic. Some of the, just a few quick takeaways, you know all of this. Boards are elected to make decisions and councils. Diversity is needed to properly debate issues. So we need to consider topics from various angles or points of view. And meaningful discussion adds value to the decision making process. And we need to debate issues respectfully, and that, that can be underscored. Uh, so there's a, as far as being on a council, you are there to participate, and you're, you need to state your opinion. If you have a hunch about something, you want to get it out on the table and be open and honest and confident in that. And then, of course, respect the opinions of others. Mm -hmm. Perspectives can, can differ, for sure. And just a, you know, a couple quick little stories here. When, when I was working in municipal government, uh, at one, one time, a, a citizen came in with a complaint about their neighbor's apple tree. And so the problem was that the apple tree was on the property line and part of the apple tree was overhanging onto their property. And it dropped apples and made a mess and they they were unhappy <laughs> so i was the administrator at the time and, and they said that they wanted the town to to intervene and so i said well some people would be happy with that <laughs> and i'm thinking for myself I, if I was the neighbor, I'd say, come on, apples, <laughs> and maybe make my neighbor an apple pie or something. But, but for this person, they, they, took, they took exception, and they, uh, eventually we had to um, intervene and have the property owner sever that portion of the, of the tree. <laughs> so, so apples only on, fell on one side of the fence. On a, another occasion, I had somebody come to, to my, the town office and they were concerned that they had a fire hydrant on their front lawn and, and so therefore they should be compensated for that because it, they didn't have full use of the, the whole lawn. And I, so that was their perspective, is that it was a, a nuisance. And I, I commented that you know, some people would be really happy <laughs> to have a fire hydrant on their... Like, so close to their property and it's actually not on your lawn but it is on the municipally owned property that is adjacent to your property and uh, so the, anyways they they ended up leaving my office and saying okay you're good at what you do <laughs> and but uh, the point is that there's different uh, difference of opinions right so point being perspectives often differ. All right, and so quickly, some local government facts. You, as, as council members, are democratically elected. 
so you're elected by the, by the citizenry. We have a system of democracy, and that is not a consensus decision-making model. So we have a majority rules model and a for decision-making, not a consensus-making model. We have an egalitarian situation, and that means that every voice at that table, all votes are equal. Even if one's louder than the other or grouchier than the other, all votes at that table are equal. We have ordinary people sitting at the, at the uh, council table and they bring diverse perspectives to the decision-making process. So we can't expect everyone to agree and of course the, the majority rules. As one of my professors from the, the MPA program stated, you can consider it more like a batting average for seasoned politicians, that sometimes your position is accepted by the majority, sometimes it's not. So it, you can consider it as a batting average. And just a reminder that uh, council's intent to serve is part of your nomination and election process for public office. In fact, uh, the oath states faithfully perform the duties of the office, and that also means to participate. It doesn't mean to, to go to the meeting and sit there. It means to participate, to get, get involved in the debate, to say, I, I hear what you're saying, I see it differently, I like this idea, this one strikes me a little bit funny, so it's a matter of being engaged and participating in the decision-making process. In case you forgot, I found your Form A for <laughs> the uh, election, the, your oath of office for members of council, and there it is, that you will faithfully, impartially, to the best of your knowledge and ability, perform the duties of this office. And there's other aspects as well, that you're going to be honest and disclose any pecuniary interests. All right. I want to emphasize the, the fact of group wisdom. So we have, uh, we have councils and boards of more than one person for a very good democratic reason, but we're also looking to, to bring wisdom from a group. So rather than just having one person's perspective, we need to garner and gather those perspectives of the group. So wisdom in decision-making quality comes from that respectful sharing of diverse perspectives. And that's group wisdom in a nutshell. If there's not enough wisdom at the table, if you need additional insights, then of course you have options there too. You might not be able to, to finalize a decision if you need more information. You can consult with your citizenry and encourage that reciprocal exchange between a council and their electorate. You can have delegations attend your meeting, and you can call on experts in the, the subject field. I emphasize that this is uh, not group think, and it's a matter of trying to put all the, the pieces together. All right, so group wisdom, I, I'm not gonna play this YouTube video, but I wanna draw it to your attention. It's by Steven Johnson, 2010, if, you're, if there's any note takers, and the, the video is called Where Good Ideas Come From. And it's a cute little infographic, but also very, very interesting, and the, the punchline is that we need to create a space for ideas to mingle. And that, a great idea, a great example of that is your local council table. And you can build on each other's hunches. So that's the punchline from the, the YouTube video on group wisdom. Contrary to group wisdom is group think, where the value of consensus comes at the price of decision quality. 
And that is not our system. We do not have a system of group think, or we should not have. If you have one, you need to get it out of there. <laughs> because we need quality decisions to build our communities strong going forward. We need all good ideas on the table. And so we, we don't want to compromise decision quality just so that we can say every vote's unanimous. That's, that's ridiculous in our, in our system. So I encourage you to uh, respect diversity and banish group think, group think from the boardroom table, from the council tables. All right, now we're going to get into our meeting simulation and I'm going to invite the voluntold volunteers <laughs> uh, up. So first of all, I'll, you'll be able to come up one at a time. First of all is our mayor. And uh, so Mr. Mayor, welcome. And our mayor, of course, will chair the meeting, maintain order and invite discussion and call for votes. And you probably want to position yourself somewhere in the center. In the center. <laughs> all right. And we have Councillor Grand. Councillor Grand is a budget maximizer. They want to make a splash. Come on up, Councillor Grand. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Any spot? And they, they sometimes think money grows on trees or that perhaps a rich uncle will come in and, and uh, bring some cash, a truckload or a wheelbarrow load full. And we also have Councillor Miser, who does not want to spend any money. And <laughs> Councillor Miser wants to focus on what's the least we can do and how much money can we save. And maybe we should delay the project. So welcome, Councillor Miser. We also have Councillor Young. Councillor Young is all concerned about youth, and what about our future generations? How will these, these decisions today impact our future generations? We have Councillor Sage, who is a wise old owl, and they're very sensitive to seniors' needs and quite comfortable with the status quo. We have Councillor Jobs, who is very interested in commercial interests and promoting job creation. Welcome. <laughs> and we have Councillor Wild. And Councillor Wild is very, very concerned for the environment. Welcome, Councillor Wild. Swans. I'm concerned about the swans. He's particularly concerned about the swans. <laughs> In pr any particular kind of so swan? The Saskatchewan. The Saskaswan. Okay. Everybody should be concerned about the Saskaswan, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So what was that? That was that didn't sound too, you know, democratic. Oh. Okay. Well, you guys can sort that out amongst yourselves. Now, for as far as any good council, they need to emphasize some some team building. And uh, for this, we have this council uh, is about to demonstrate group wisdom because they're going to solve a puzzle. And this is a kind of like an animal control puzzle. It's a four piece wooden puzzle of a dog. And I'll just pass it over. You guys can start if you can finish it. And this is a, a, a my son actually the the lady built, doing this. This, built this puzzle a few years back. He's now 16. And so it's a four-piece puzzle, and it's of a dog. And so while you are the council, I'm going to ask if you can, can we open, open. Yes, you can open it up. <laughs> Take it apart. Get, get in there. Everybody will need to gather around and get hands on and try to solve the puzzle. 
of the, the dog. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's tough to make all the pieces fit. The and young know everything, so come, you know, the <laughs> So, and while they are diligently trying to solve this puzzle, there's four pieces there. We'll give them about three minutes. And while they're working on that, mm -hmm. we're going to listen to a, a YouTube uh, clip on uh, called a song called what are you waiting for and I consider this a little bit appropriate because now is your time as as council members as administrative personnel you are you are at the your local table and you are making it happen so what are you waiting for this is your time to do good things okay so go council where are we supposed to go <laughs> <laughs> well, you can start by solving the puzzle. Okay, do you have it done? No. No, we're waiting for the young. Oh, they need young. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so have you completed? Have you solved the puzzle? Certainly have. Uh, the dog is dead. <laughs> we've, we've notified the proper authorities. <laughs> That's not right. That's not right. <laughs> you mean we shouldn't have? Seriously? <laughs> it's not only not right, it's not even close. <laughs> okay. Oh, just take <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a picture. She's taking a picture and of I've this. Got, uh, the mayor, the mayor and Councillor Grand's name tags in here. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. I'm, so I'm, I'm Walter Strelaski from Melville. <laughs> <laughs> We're, I'm wasting this. Is Walter here? I'm sorry. Uh, I went to MIT. <laughs> Brian, so report to Walter. <laughs> when uh, when your team has a fellow by the name of Jobs on it. <laughs> Perhaps there's an app for that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if, if um, one or maybe it'll take a couple of you could hold up your dog 
so, so everyone can see it? This was, the, this was my part, this is the head of the dog, this is a terrier. This is the tail and the back leg. <laughs> and we've commissioned a report on what the hell <laughs> But I think it's better to get parking meters. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. If we have, is there a woodworker in the house? Right. Is, is that what they were trying to build? Uh, sort of. Okay, so I'm going to show you just to put everybody's mind. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's only four okay. pieces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'll bet Oops. you can do it, though. <laughs> okay. It's like this. <laughs> yeah, Scotty. Little well, see, Scotty. I had my part. Okay. You got the head right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So it's a matter of making all the pieces fit. Sometimes you don't know exactly what you're doing, or it, you, is it even a dog? Right. And so it's, it's a little bit of a, a demonstration on uh, when you're dealing with issues, sometimes it's, it's complicated. And you need to call on experts, or you you need to work together. But uh, so between them, they did pretty good. They got three out of the four pieces. All right. So thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. All right. So now, getting serious, onto the agenda. So there, this council is about to debate three important issues for the community. And one is a walking path extension, so a recreation project. And another one is pothole repairs, so in the transportation department. And the third agenda item is uh, paying or putting a pay for parking system in place for the community to generate some revenue. All right, and I will turn this over to Mr. Mayor. And the council, if you could please uh, call the meeting to order and make it happen. Certainly. We'll, we'll make believe that our agenda has already been adopted. And we will move forward to our, our first item of business. Now, now, generally, somebody administration who actually knows what the hell is going on would introduce things to us because we need to be spoon-fed. Uh, but in the absence of that, I will spoon-feed uh, what we're doing. And, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to council for your, uh, for your decisions. So basically we're dealing with a pay for parking project because we know citizens are always happy to pay for parking. And uh, the report recommends that City Council approve the pay for parking project as a means of generating additional revenue. Could that be item number three? Certainly, that could be item number three. What's the, it's the first one you gave me. So, the walking path extension. Yeah, that's, oh, okay. If you, if you don't mind. <laughs> Certainly not. Be careful because he has a short fuse. Almost, almost as good as the team building dog strategy. <laughs> so, council, if I was taller, I'd have seen that. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're going ahead with our uh, walking path. Oh, here we go. A recreation project, a walking path extension. Now, the report recommends project approval for a walking path extension to increase the enjoyment of the city's natural spaces. A one kilometer trail extension is proposed comprising of two phases each of half a kilometer each. Phase one would connect the pool to the existing downtown trail system, and phase two would connect the trail system from the pool to a future playground, which we can't afford. However, the proposed connection is through the middle of an environmentally sensitive area. Now, our previous uh, actions on this, Councillor Young initially proposed the project in response to community pressures for increased recreational amenities, and Council directed administration uh, to uh, take a look at costs and do an environmental seven sensitivity uh, report. Uh, the attached 90-page environmental study, which I know all of you have read in detail, would have a significant negative environmental impact to both plants and wildlife. In fact, undisturbed native vegetation in the area produces a rare plant species, and this unique habitat is the perfect nesting ground for the extremely rare Saska swan. You'll see the Saska swan portrayed on the screen. This is almost as long as most of our introduction. Anyway, 
Uh, corporate outcomes, the project aligns with the following strategic initiatives which were set by Council to increase the availability of recreational services, to promote community health, and to provide pedestrian friendly transportation options, or options I should say, for residents and visitors. Budgetary considerations. Costs are $10,000 per 100 meters for gravel trail, that's $100,000 in total. $50,000 per 100 meters for a paved trail, that's $500,000 in total. And the project qualifies for a 50% grant. Seriously? <laughs> From the new provincial urban heartbeat fund. The municipal 50% portion could come from recreation reserves, $300,000 balance, or a recreation tax. Uh, there are no legal implications or impairments that we know of. So the recommendation from staff, the City Council approve a one kilometer walking path extension project with phase one paved $250,000, phase two gravel surface $50,000 and the project be funded with a grant funding and recreation reserves. The recreation tax, 1% property tax increase, ooh, that'll be popular, to fund the growing demand for recreational services. Council, that is your staff recommendations. What say you? Well, Councillor Grant. Councillor Sage. Oh. Or no, Councillor Council Sage, Sage, I'm sorry. Here. I'd just like to say, on behalf of the seniors, I agree with phase one, but if you go ahead into phase two, it's going to interrupt with the seniors enjoying and also everything we've worked towards in saving our nesting grounds, our rare plant species for the Saskaswan for so many years. Why would we put that in danger? So I'm in, in agreement for phase one, but for phase two, absolutely not. So are you moving uh, phase one or phase two or neither of the phase above? Phase one. You're moving uh, phase one? So we have a mover moved by Councillor Sage. Do we have a seconder? We kind of we have, really, to, we we have to have I a seconder think we need first. To we need a seconder first, then we can debate it. Oh. Seconded by Councillor Young? Sure. I'll Seconded by Councillor One? No, debate. Councillor Young. Okay. I think we really need to debate this. Um, it's important for our community to have this recreational opportunity. In phase one, that would simply be too short of a, a trail to, be, to provide any recreational ability. It's too short. We need to continue with the phase two. Um, <coughs> there is grant money and funds available to help offset those costs and I think we need to to really consider going going ahead with that with both phases with both phases absolutely not um, <coughs> why, why would you have to connect phase one and phase two why would you have to connect the the younger with the older like a lot of the ones that are going to take part in the walking trail, as for seniors I'm talking, will have their walkers and it's, it's such a pleasure to be able to do your aqua size and then go out onto a paved roadway and walk for the afternoon or enjoy the Saskaswan. And but if we're going to consider the community and not only one portion of it as the seniors, that's why you would then we need to connect it to the playground. But you wouldn't have to connect the seniors and the children because they're going to connect. It's just not going to work. They're going to be running back and forth and the seniors are going to be going along. It's going to be, I think, it's just looking Well, maybe trouble. we need to consider a larger path so it's or wide enough division, for both uses. Or a division. A total restructuring, maybe, of phase two. What I, I would say. If you'd push your buttons, the lights would come on and then I could recognize you individually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else uh, want to, uh, to weigh in? Councillor Grand. Um, I am Councillor Grand, and <laughs> I've been on council for many years, and I, I'm very important here. <laughs> this is a tremendous idea, but let's face it, we need revenue, and revenue the train is driven by that revenue stream and when we get to my topic you'll see why I like these ideas but let's look at where we're going over a shorter period of time that I like to refer to as shorter because I'm getting older a two-year moratorium on this particular project would fit what I would like to see even though I think these type of forward thinking projects are A1 in my book. And both Councillor Sage and Councillor Young, 
you both have excellent opinions. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Grant. Now I think it's time for uh, Councillor Wild to weigh in. Yes. Because it's I, your turn. I agree. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, the little dilemma we have with this is the swans don't pay tax. <laughs> and so we have to remember who's paying the bill, but we also have to be responsible. So I think it's up to all of us to find the middle of the road here. We have to come up with a plan to extend the walking paths as a recreation facility for our community. We also need to preserve the habitat for the birds because that's all part of the amenity of that wonderful walk in the evening. And we have to figure out how to pay for it all. So I think there's a responsible approach here. Um, I'm not 100% in favor of that 1% property tax hike. You know, we would become the next target and that wouldn't be good. So you guys all have wonderful points of view and you're representing people. I am speaking on behalf of these Saskaswans. <laughs> and it's important, even though they don't have a voice, that we consider their stake in this outcome. So just I appreciate your consideration and thanks for your input. Thank you, Councillor. I, I, it's perhaps time for Councillor Miser to, uh, to chime in. Well, I really think that we should leave it as grass the way it has been always because why would we want to have a 1% increase? We don't, even have the, we don't even have the playground up yet. And you're already talking about putting a path into nowhere. The playground's not developed yet. It might be there, it might not. We might decide in another year or two to put it in a different place. All right, well, I think we've heard, we've heard from uh, pretty much everyone council. Does anybody else have a final argument? As we go along, we'll find that there is funding for our phase one. And, the, and I also have a voice for the Saskatchewan because all these years of living there, you know, we've looked after it and that's, that's all, just phase one. <laughs> Councillor Grant. Well, I, I just don't know what to think because uh, most of this land I own. <laughs> <laughs> so, Councillor, you may you may want to recruit. Rec I may need to to leave the room. <laughs> That's timely timely information indeed. <laughs> Would any, anyone else uh, care to weigh in? Yes, the one, one thing that I think we have to consider here is if we're going to mobilize a crew in, maybe Jobs wants to get in on this, but <laughs> if we're going to mobilize a crew in here, it, you know, the cost of the MOB and DMOB, it makes the most sense to come up with a plan where we can do both phases together. And phase two isn't nearly as significant of a cost as phase one, so I think we've got to consider that as well securing resources, getting them here, and going at it all at once. Engineering and design is another issue. Do it as a package. And I would totally agree with that. I think that's important. And if it's a point that we need to say, stay away from the nesting ground of the Saskatchewan, then we could look at rerouting it or making a, a separate loop, I guess, to, to stay away from that nesting ground. All right. Well, thank you, Council. We have uh, a uh, motion to support our staff recommendation moved by Councillor Sage, seconded by Councillor Young. If there's no further discussion, I will call the question. All in favor? Opposed? And who is counting? <laughs> I have administration to do that. We're going to say, okay, who is in favor again? So that's two. One, two, three. Opposed? That's got to be four. Yes, I can. I always vote. It was Everybody carried. votes, correct? It was, Every, carried. It was carried. There were four votes. Four, four three? It was carried four to three. Okay, it either yes. failed or it passed, one of the two. Yeah. And we're all in favor of protecting the tasty swan. <laughs> the Saskia swan. All right. Uh, great job, you guys. <laughs> Okay.
Yeah, I didn't want to because it's way too long. <laughs> Are you going to get, go ahead uh, the, with the next one then? The, uh, yes, and so the council has read all the, the information provided, all the 90-page reports and the requests for decisions, and they're, they're well briefed and they know their opinions, and they're ready to move on to the next item. I think what, that the... What about the public? You don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is good. I like this. And this is a good format. <laughs> so, and so it's just also important to make sure that every councillor speaks uh, okay. on every issue. Okay. So, um, but the, the you swans know, are unemployable. Yeah, yeah. You know, even, the, uh, even the in, in the real world, I, I probably would have been more aggressive, <laughs> like you said, any more, and I would have, I would have repeated what I had said before with more emphasis, uh -huh. because I knew. <laughs> That this was this, this that wasn't enough. <laughs> okay, here's your here's your chance, Councillor Grandin. Well, Next they already grant, they already okay. voted. <laughs> yes, for sure. But you have there's more items. Remember the batting average. Sure. So we're going to okay. move on to potholes. Please do. Certainly. Take we're away. going to move on uh, again with the, our uh, transportation operating budget adjustments uh, to deal with road surface repairs. Uh, does anybody need to declare a pecuniary interest? Does anybody own a business <laughs> to do with road repairs? <laughs> Seeing none, we shall sally forth. Uh, so we've all seen the summary. Uh, we've raised the, the pothole issue at a, a previous council meeting was raised by Councillor Jobes. Uh, we've looked into our budgetary considerations. Uh, we know what those are. So we're going to move on now to the, uh, the staff recommendation. The recommendation from staff is that City Council approve a $30,000 increase to the 2015 operating budget to complete road surface repairs in the transportation department uh, with project revenue coming from current taxation. So that will be about a pothole and a half that will we'll, we'll be, we'll be fixing there with $30,000. $30, so uh, this was uh, brought forward by Councillor Jobs. So I think we'll, uh, we'll start with Councillor Jobs uh, for your, uh, your comments. The first thing that has to be dealt with on this is the legal implications. Prior to road surface repair, the project would demonstrate a significant effort by council to create a safer driving experience in the community. Over the past two years, $60,000 in legal cost and staff time has been addressed because of the poor roads. As of this, this I am in favor of taking the $30,000 and putting it toward this pothole repair of the whole city. Thank you, councillor. Any further discussion? Councillor Grant. Um, hi. Hi, Mike. I, I, I really appreciate your, uh, you've been on the council almost as long as I have jobs. <laughs> but if we do this, I certainly would like our administration to consider the quality of the work of the job, of the repair of the surface of the roads. The simple fact is we've had our roads repaired in the past and they have not sustained uh, winter months and into spring. So if that's a consideration and we get the best job possible for the money invested, I'm certainly in favor of uh, that, this whole project because safety is important and it's our responsibility. Just, just to back up for the, the, you know, the sake of being politically correct, uh, Councillor Jobs was moving that and it was seconded by Councillor Grand, and now we're in the discussion phase. If anybody was paying attention, there was a little subtext there. Okay. <laughs> so we do have a mover and a seconder. Anyone with anything uh, they'd like to add to this discussion? Councillor Miser, you must be upset with the, uh, the $30,000 we plan on spending for that pothole and a half. Well, I'm really upset that you're, you're considering this. We had allocated 10000 but I'm really more concerned that, that we're, we're paying 60000 in legal fees. So I'm really at a, a, a really bad position right here because I don't want to spend any of the money because I can't stand to make a tax increase. But we obviously need to have something done with the potholes. So it's pay Peter, Peter to Paul or whatever that saying goes. <laughs> <laughs> and, our, and our legal fees are twice the cost of the project. That's right. typical. Uh, anybody else uh, care to uh, chime in? Well, that should make a move then, uh, Councillor Miser. As he said, our legal fees surpass what it's going to cost to repair the road, so I'm a yes. 
As of the jobs end of this, I would just like to specify too, if these holes are not fixed, the water goes down, we could have substantial damage to our water lines underneath and our sewer lines, which could create more problems in the tune of two to three hundred thousand dollars if anybody is thinking about that. Thank you, Councillor. Good point. Councillor Miser. Well, I'm for it, definitely, then, because I'm all about saving money and not spending any more than we have to, so I agree with the 30000 Is your son our lawyer? <laughs> well done. <laughs> nothing, no, nothing further, Council? It was duly more or less moved by Councillor uh, Jobs, seconded by Councillor Grand. If there's no further debate, I'll call the question. All in favour? Opposed? <laughs> and that's carried. All right, we'll move on to. Uh, which one are we on now? now pay for parking. That's one I was going to start with. Okay. Pay for parking. Uh, the summary in this report is that uh, we're going to generate more revenue from people who come from out of town, which is a terrific way to get them to come back. <laughs> so, there are a number of implications uh, to this, and uh, we hopefully will debate some of those. Uh, the overall staff recommendation is that City Council approve a $500,000 pay for parking project for the downtown core funded through grant funding and general reserve funds. Do we have anyone to move this recommendation? Councillor Grand will move. Moved by Councillor Grand, seconded by Councillor Sage. And discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Councillor Miser, you must love this one. <laughs> well, I'm really not in favor. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really not in favor. Who's to, I understand the, the, the implications of making more money, but I, I don't understand why we have to rush into this. Has there been a feasibility study as to how many people come into our community and would this project really pay for itself? Good points, um, which will be refu refuted by Councillor Jobs. I I just like for to recoup the five hundred dollars that we got to put into this is going to take years. Number one, to pay for it when you're paying for parking. Number two, all you're doing is dinging the services of your own town. Very 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 few that come to town are going to be able to park. Won't park there. To me, it, it's a negative. You're going backwards. And Councillor Young, how do the uh, youth feel about paying for parking? Well, I don't like this idea whatsoever. What's going to end up happening is people are not going to be parking in those pay for parking. They're going to be parking in front of my house on the residential streets, not paying for parking, obstructing traffic. I don't think it's a good idea whatsoever. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilde, there are, there, are yes. no, there are no swans implicated in this, but <laughs> feel, feel free. The swan keeper does have an opinion. So there's a couple of things that we haven't talked about here. Number one, the box stores are taken over out in the east end, and we got to do everything we can to support our downtown core. And, you know, possibly they might consider a, you know, a habitat donation towards our swan project if we don't put parking in front of their business. And I know, it's a, I know it's kind of a big, complicated, strategic initiative that we'd have to do as a package, but I think it's really something that everybody should consider here. Everybody needs to be heard. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> hey, big spender, normally I'm with you, but... Uh, <laughs> This is for the purpose and the success of the workshop, so <laughs> let's work together, Council, please. Oop -de -doop -de. <laughs> I think we'll, uh, we, we should uh, check with Councillor Jobs as, as, as to whether it, in imposing these meters is going to affect jobs in our downtown court. I think there's going to be a negative impact on that part of it as far as the jobs go. It, looking at parking enforcement, we require bylaw changes and update the staff and everything else. I, I can't see it. Well, you know, I, 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 we got to be nice to everybody, but I don't think we have to be nice to everybody. <laughs> let's, let's face it. Now, 
we were talking about something about the sharing of revenue from the provincial government. And we don't know where we're going to stand on that issue. So here we're going to spend a whole bunch of money that we have no particular backup to make sure we have the money. But we're nice guys and girls. Like, really? Let's get serious about it and, and get our, our money in place so that we can be uh, responsible in this whole area. My voice has got uh, higher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm emotional about this. Okay, so just, just a question. Has anybody talked to the downtown businesses? No, we don't want to do that. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, who's... <laughs> who's, uh, <coughs> who's uh, any response to that? So, hearing none, I would say no. Maybe that's where we start tonight. Maybe, maybe somebody's got to go talk to them. I agree. All right. Well, Council, anything further on this, Council? We, we, have a, we do have a mover and a seconder. And, and to recap, we're getting, we're getting grants on two out of three projects. So, I mean, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Any, uh, anything further, Council? Well, if, as far as for the seniors go, for the pay for parking, as long as it's not in front of the doctor's offices and such, then I wouldn't be too opposed to it. Okay, but where are we going to get the half a million dollars to put them in? I don't know. Right. The government, there, there's a grant apparently. <laughs> yes. Okay, Council, are we, are we all said and done? So if, the, grant, the grant is only a third of that, $500,000, so we got to look after the rest of it. So that's only part of it. And I know we do have a reserve fund, but it could be used on other things. I agree. I'm glad, glad you said reserve and not slush. <laughs> That's for later. <laughs> it's after yeah. the council meeting. It, you know, I agree with the uh, uh, councillor uh, Wild. Was it you? I don't remember. If it was a good idea, yeah, yes. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> that we should, there should be consultation with the downtown biz businesses. The, the point of, of uh, reference here, however, is the, com the communities of our similar size in our region all have this type of revenue stream. And they seem to have, their, their swans are happy. Yeah, okay, hold on here, Grande. Just a second. <laughs> I was just phoning with you. <laughs> Yeah, okay, they, hold on. They may, they may have talked to their downtown businesses. So if we're going to pursue their model, let's go find out what they did. I agree. Okay. But the whole point is where we're heading is, is the right place because we're not ogres uh, because there's a whole bunch of other communities that have gone the same path. And you're right. Let's take the right path to get where we think we should be going and then we'll make our decision. You bet. I, I'm, I think we're on this right page. Okay. To, to re recap, Council, we, ha we have a motion by Councillor Grand, seconded by Councillor Sage, to spend $500,000 for a pay-for-parking project whose, whose payback will probably be about 75 years. Uh, so uh, with, 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 uh, with that in mind, I'll, I'll, I'll call the question. All, all in favor? And opposed? And we're done. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Thank you very, very much. That was extremely well done. You can take your, uh, your agenda items if you wish. <laughs> Clean up, Council. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have enough stuff. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so certainly a great demonstration of, of differing opinions and respectful debate. All right. And uh, so just a quick reminder that uh, from the takeaways, the councils, boards, you're elected to make decisions. Diversity is needed to properly debate issues. In fact, there's a, a saying that good debate leads to good decisions. So I think that's quite fitting. And of course, to debate issues respectfully. And I have a little picture here of polished stones. And so you can imagine that when there's a little bit of friction or a little bit of uh, differing opinions, then you can get a more polished decision. That's not my phone. <laughs> and, and so a quick little uh, 
piece from my, my master's program. I, I studied administrative argument and uh, I, I actually don't like to argue all the time, I like to get along, but I, I thought that this was very fitting uh, information for you as counsellors and ad administrators that, uh, from Hood and Jackson. And so the administrative argument component is that most arguments can be framed under the basis of efficiency or fairness, which is equity, right, equal, fair to everybody, or resilience and organizational stability. So the, the theorists or the, the experts in the field have looked at all the different arguments. When people come to, to the table, when you're hearing delegates approach you or uh, approach the council and they're arguing for a project, it, it's typically around one of these items. And so as a council, uh, if you're looking to uh, visualize the shot you want to hit to um, at the bottom quote here from Matthew Kelly, uh, if you're looking at what's your, what's your point, what's your, um, your argument? Are you arguing that we need to be fair to everyone? We can't just have a walking trail on one part of town uh, or something that will benefit only a certain section of the community. We need to be fair to everyone. Or are you, are you making an argument based on on efficiency, that we need to to scale it back to be more more fiscally responsible, or are you making an argument based on strengthening your organization and being more resilient, more adaptable? And the the punchline of this uh, pursuit of persuasion is somewhat around the the next item here, the quote that says, uh, "What makes for winning arguments is the standing of the proponent." and the packaging of the argument. And that's a quote from theory, right? From the, the leading experts in our administrative argument. But basically, what they're saying is that to make a winning argument, you have to be credible. You have to be uh, in good standing with your group in order for people to hear your, your perspective and to give you, give, give you credibility and thought. So, if you are on your, so on your council, if you are respectful in hearing other people's opinions and, and also uh, sharing yours, then you're, you're going to be in good standing. And uh, the opposite is true as well, that if you're not a very nice council member to be on the board with, then you're going to lose credibility. And so when you want to to make, you want to be persuasive, you want to make your, your points and move issues along, you need to make sure that you, you maintain that, uh, it's called rhetorical power, to be in good standing and to package your, your argument in a persuasive way. All right. And so of course, what do you do if you make a poor decision? Well, you hope that never happens, <laughs> but it, it it happens. And so you are, you are in a position to make decisions and if you make a bad one, you can learn from it, you can uh, do your best to, to rectify that or, and, and be transparent and hold your integrity and confidence in your position to say, okay, public, we made this decision based on these facts, situations have changed so we're going to take another look at it. But at the, at the time that the decision was made, it was a sound decision with the majority of the council in favor. So they're counting on you, your citizens are counting on you to act in their best interest. And uh, board appointments are, are serious commitments and you're elected to make quality decisions. So you want to make sure that you you have those diverse opinions coming forward and that you're, you're looking at a variety of perspectives. And also, there's a, a need for you as, a, as councils to, to police each other, to police yourself as a council. So if you have somebody that is stepping out of line a bit, you can, you can bring them back into the fold by just emphasizing that, you know, that I found that your comments were, were disrespectful or, you know, it was a little bit, 
it, you could have been more respectful in, in refuting my argument, but, and so it's just a matter of, of um, policing yourself and not taking every opportunity to take offense, right? You have to turn the other cheek sometime and say, okay, they, they were a little bit arrogant, but hey, it's, <laughs> they're learning too, right? You're on the, you're on the team together. And uh, it's important that as a council, as a whole, as a board, wherever you're sitting, that you insist that professional debate rules the day and that important issues are, are debated in that respectful setting. And you want to act fairly prompt. So a, a good decision made today is better than a, a perfect plan tomorrow, right? And that's a quote from George Patton. All right, and uh, another quote from Susan Cain, and she speaks on introverts, actually, but uh, this is not her. This is just a picture of, uh, I thought was, was interesting, but uh, the quote is that there is zero correlation between being the best talker and having the best ideas. All right, so that is food for thought. Uh, just because somebody is a very eloquent, eloquent talker, maybe their idea isn't the greatest, but uh, so it's a matter of you as a council, as council members, to uh, recognize that sometimes great ideas are presented in an awkward way or a little bit of a clumsy package. And you as, the, as council members can develop the skills to be probing, to exercise that probity, to ask the questions and find the value despite the packaging of the, <laughs> of the idea. And also, I encourage you to look at people's intentions. And yes, this is a picture of a, a liquor store. <laughs> and uh, just to, to share an example that sometimes people can innocently be mis misinterpreted with their intentions. So you, as a council, as leaders, you, you want to look at people's intentions. And just to, to share a little bit of an embarrassing moment for me, uh, is that uh, last summer, I was making, or planning to make a nice supper. I picked up some Alberta beef at the, the grocery store in, in West Edmonton. And I proceeded across the parking lot on a, a bit of a sunny day and to grab a bottle of wine and I it was a little bit bright and I grabbed the first door I came to and it was very very hard to open but I got in and I and once I opened the door and, and was standing there I realized that I couldn't go any farther and that I had actually come in the exit door to the liquor store and so here I was uh, quite embarrassed and I got all the attention of the staff and usually I don't frighten people with my first impression but that day <laughs> I, I certainly caught everybody's attention in in there they're wondering who's coming in now but I, I had completely harmless innocent intentions and I just happened to go in the wrong door so um, bad that on me. <laughs> so, and of course, I, as, when I got in, I said, did I just come in the exit door? <laughs> but, uh, uh, so anyway, as leaders, you can, uh, you can give people better perspective to say, you know what, you are, you're not seeing things quite correctly, or you've got a good idea, but just bad timing, or um, maybe try a, try a little different angle. So as a, as a council, as administrators, you're dealing with the facts and you can show people clearly the, the best way to proceed. And so you have uh, a lot broader perspective and you need to share that in an open way with your, your electorate. Okay, and so uh, you're going to share your facts. And just to give you another little story here, uh, when I was working as an administrator, um, one day I had a gentleman come in with a complaint that his street light was out. No problem. So there we have a system for that. And we told him, okay, here's the, here's the number to call the power company, or if you wish, we can call the power company for you and they'll come and fix your light. 
and he asked if we would please contact the power company so no problem and then he says to me I think someone in here has a switch and <laughs> Uh, so, meanwhile, my staff is trying not to, they're, they're being very professional, and I, I assured him that we do not have switches for such things. But <laughs> after that, my staff had a, they, they gave me the reputation of being the administrator with a button under my desk for everything. So, as if nowadays people would say, do you have an app for that? And <laughs> At that time, they said, okay, Sherry Ann, problem with the sewer, do you have a button for that? Can you push the button? But the point is that you're going to share your facts, and sometimes people, or your, your citizens, just need the, to be told that, you know, we, we can't quite, we don't have buttons for that, <laughs> or you're, you're out of line, or you're seeing it, you're seeing it improperly. Uh, so besides this workshop, uh, I do some other consulting and uh, I also have a, a youth version of this workshop which is really quite cute and in the past I, the youth have debated a, a bike helmet item from uh, Yorkton actually but <laughs> so that was that was fun but I also do some evaluation work and service reviews and I work with other consulting companies as well, such as Strategic Steps, based out of Sherwood Park and also um, affiliated with the Palman Group, uh, Dennis Palman. I'm not sure if uh, some of you may know that organization. I also work with uh, InfraCycle Fiscal Solutions on some fiscal impact analysis. And so, and then the education component. So, of course, this uh, board governance training and I have some folks from Saskatchewan that are uh, interested in working along with me that uh, to help deliver the the workshop and also as uh, Glenn mentioned I am part of the uh, the education program training uh, personnel for the Association of Manitoba municipalities so I'm very excited about that I'm uh, presenting with my colleague from uh, strategic steps on strategic and sustainability planning and also on uh, municipal performance measurement why would we measure and a, a quick little snapshot there that if we're not measuring we're just practicing and we need to have meaningful measures and also public engagement and so that that's very important with your your citizen consultation and another one of uh, is government a business and so sometimes we see there's a, a strong focus on customer service and and that's good but one thing that I learned in in my masters of public administration program is that if we only look at government as a business and a citizen as a customer that's much too narrow in fact there there's other hats that people wear in society such as uh, being subject to their government if you look at evacuation orders for example where's the customer service in that or uh, a client sometimes there's a, a client type relationship and the citizen where they, they actually elect their their counselors or their their government uh, representatives so there's a variety of hats that people wear in society and it's not only always a customer although sometimes it is very much a customer service as far as buying something like a pool pass right from your your municipality and uh, there's that transactional relationship so with that that concludes the the presentation and I thank you so much for for your participation and I would welcome any any comments and questions just a quick mention before everybody leaves there's a hospitality night tonight at the Radisson Hotel Michelangelo A B and C and the last bus leaves here at 515 
before nice. I can I butt in? Uh, and one more thing is that if you wish to reach me, I, I do have some brochures, some cards up here on uh, the workshop, and I'm also on Twitter and LinkedIn. So if you wish to reach me, please connect. Thank you. Sherry Ann, on behalf of SUMA and all the delegates here, this is a small donation to the Mike Badham Scholarship Fund on your behalf. Thank, Thank you very much. Mike Bottom was a, was a you know, long time student member or something that you need to talk more. Yes. And if I could invite the volunteers up, I just have a, a little token of my appreciation for your participation as well. Did you, uh, did you get a card? No. No? Okay. And you, and a, you can take a card and a brochure if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. I'll just, I'll let you grab them yourself. Okay. There's Stampeder stamps. Thank you so much. Well done. Okay. Stampeder stamps. Is it?